Hi everyone, in this video, we will understand the convolutional neural network and implement it using TensorFlow 2. What you are seeing in this slide is multi-layer perceptron, which is the basic deep learning model. This model is powerful, but there is a huge drawback. Understanding this drawback is very important before we start talking about CNN. Can you see all these ones in this slide? They look similar ones to human eyes. So I think we are okay to use this data set for train and test. Let's split train and test. The very first step of multi-layer perception is to flatten two-dimensional image into one-dimensional vector, as you can see in this slide. This means we use all pixels as features. In this example, we have 25 features going in the neural network. Here are the flattened images from the previous digit 1 example. I think train accuracy will be high since the train data has a pattern. Looks like if 2, 7, 12, 17, 22 are white color, the digit is supposed to be the 1. But I think the test accuracy will be very low since test data pattern is totally different than the train data pattern. 2, 7, 12, 17, and 22 are black in the test data. This is overfitting. Train was happy, but the test was unhappy. Do you think the data was the problem? No, I don't think so. Data is great since you could recognize digit 1 from the whole data set with your eyes before flattening the data. So there are four CNN. Now it is time to understand how the CNN can work better than the multi-layer perceptron. Let's come back to this slide again. I want to ask you one question. Can you guess what numbers are these? It is very hard to guess the number with flattened image. It is very hard to guess the number from the deep learning model too. But if you see the original 2D image, you can easily guess what these images represent. There, these are the old digit 1. Why do you think it is easy to guess with 2D image? Because 2D image have a locality of pixel dependency. In each word, we can find a digit feature like vertical line, horizontal line, diagonal line from the 2D image. These are the key features to guess the number. This vertical horizontal line, as known as the features for identifying the image, are totally missing in the flattened 1D image. So the multi-layer perception obviously suffers from missing key features. The next question, how CNN keeps the locality of pixel dependency? CNN uses 2D image itself to detect the feature, so no flattening in feature extraction phase. Then, how CNN detects the horizontal vertical line from the 2D image? Yes, this is the key of the CNN. Here I prepared the digit 1 and the digit 2 example for understanding how the CNN detects the horizontal line or vertical line. You and I can detect diagonal, vertical, horizontal features from these 2D images. We know that if there are many vertical lines, it is most likely digit 1, and if there are many horizontal lines, it is most like digit 2. There is a corner which is 2D matrix for detecting features. Say we have this corner for detecting vertical line, so you can see there are two white pixels vertically in this corner. With the human eye, we can say there is a vertical line if the corners white pixels and the red boxes of white pixels are overlapped in the input image. Furthermore, we also can count how many times the corner have overlapped with image and figure out if there are many vertical lines or not. So I move this one. And you can detect the vertical line at here. And here. And also here. And here. So at this point, we know there is a vertical line, so we found four times of the vertical lines. If we do the same trick on the digit 2, you will find six times match with the horizontal corner. So it is most like digit 2. Oh wait, 
if the image has the gray color digit, then the, our kernel cannot detect vertical line since white is different than the gray color. So let's be smarter. We can use number instead of the color. In grayscale, 0 means black, 255 means white, and the more white, the greater number. The corner has 255 for detecting vertical, and we just multiply corner value with overlapped pixel value. So 255 times 0 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, 255 times 0 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. And summing up for these four values in one number, which is 0. And do the same thing on the different position. Move the corner from the top left to the bottom right corner and calculate all numbers. You can see, now we have the 4x4 four four matrix in here. Hooray! Using the numbers, we successfully found the gray color and uh, in the 2D images here. The corner is a 2D matrix having weight which will be optimized during the training. In the behind scene, there is your familiar equation will be calculated. The ReLU is one of the mostly used activation function for CNN and you can see the real output in this slide. While our example was gray scale image, when it comes to RGB image, you will hear filter and the corner interchangeably. So what is the difference between the filter and the corner? Well, the filter is to detect feature. Corner is 2D matrix which we move on the image. And uh, here is the RGB image. You can see the digit 1 is now RGB color images. This looks like one image, but this is actually overlapped color of the red, green, and blue. So as you can see in this slide, there are actually three 2D images. Let's say there is one filter to detect vertical line. In order to detect vertical line from the red, green, and blue image, you will need three corners. So filter is a set of corners and the filter is to detect one feature. Filter has corners. The number of the corners are the same with the number of the input feature maps. You can see each corner moves on each feature map. Just like this. All right. So we move four times to the right side and the four times and to the downside. So each corner will generate each map. We will sum up all corners map. I omitted the bias in this diagram by the way. Then apply activation function and normally CNN uses ReLU which is just return its number when the number is greater than 0 or just return 0. The yellow table in this slide is the final feature map from this filter. One filter, three corners. So now we have learned the most important part of the CNN. It is time to understand overall CNN. This is the CNN we will go over from the beginning to the end of the process. So are you ready? The input is grayscale image. So we just have one 2D image, so we just need one corner to move around. Let's suppose we want to detect two features, so we have two filters in first convolutional layer. Filter 1's corner is moving from top left to the bottom right. Just like this. Okay, then the filter 2's corner is also moving from the top left to the bottom right. 4 times to the right side, 4 times to the downside. Since there were two filters, you can see the output has two feature maps. And the shape is 4x4 four four, since the corner moved the right side 4 times and moved the downside 4 times. I put TensorFlow 2 code snippet in this slide. The line uh, should be easy to understand if you are following me now. The COM2D means we are handling 2D matrix. You can see the corner size is 2x2 two two matrix. 
we use ReLU as a reactivation function and the input shape is the grayscale image shape here. Next is the pulling layer. I will use the max pulling here. Max pulling takes the max number in the boundary. So the max number in 0, 50, 100, and 200 is 200. We only take 200. And the next boundary, we take 100, then 50, and 0. So uh, you can see the output of pulling layer shape is 2 by 2, which is smaller than the input shape. So like this, like this, and like this. Pulling layer helps reducing parameters count and the computation time and also reduce the variance from the model so it may help avoid the overfitting. So here I visualize how pulling layers works. You can see we just take the maximum values from the input feature maps. And here is the, the TensorFlow to code snippet. As you check, the pull size is the 2 by 2 here. Now we have two feature maps, so the next convolutional layer must have two corners in one filter. Let's suppose we want to detect two features, therefore we have two filters which have the two corners. Before we start convolution, I think the feature map size is too small to, over, to move our corners. The problem of the convolution step is it makes feature map size smaller. Normally, people use zero padding trick to avoid shrinking feature map size and also give boundary information to the model. It is just adding zeros at the boundary of the feature map, as you can see in this slide. Now we have zero padded features map. So let's run first feature filter. Corner 1 will run on the feature map 1 and the corner 2 will run on the feature map 2. Since this corner moved three times to the right side and the three times downside, you can see the three by two matrix as written value here. Then we add two output values. Then add bias. Then apply relative equation function here. So this is the first filter's output feature map. And then the filter two will send the corner one to feature map one and send the corner 2 to the feature map 2 and again run this corner on the feature map from the top left to the bottom right. Just like this. Then add two outputs, then add bias, then apply relative activation. Now we have two output feature maps. Congratulations, you just manually calculate the most important and the most difficult part of the CNN. So now we have two feature maps. After the pulling layer, the size will be 2x2. Two two. These 2x2 two two are the output of feature extraction now. So now we will classify using these features. There is a big difference between the multi-layer perceptron and CNN here. While the multi-layer perceptron uses all pixels as features, CNN uses detected locality of pixel dependencies as each feature. Let's flatten feature so it will be just 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Then send this flattened vector to feed forward layers. Feed forward layers are composed dense layers and the softmax layer. You can find the TensorFlow to code here. And there will be backpropagation for updating weights and bias. Well, the initial value of filter is just random, so we don't know what kind of feature will be detected by the filters we made at the, at the, at the beginning point we make this deep learning model. In this backpropagation process, the filters will be trained as a vertical de detector or the horizontal detectors. This is all for today. You can play with the collab and practice yourself by going this link. I hope you enjoyed this video and clear understanding of CNN. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.